Hi, uh, I'm Akhil. Uh, I'm a student uh, doing my undergrad in computer science in Amrita University, India. And I'd like to start off by saying thank you. Like, thank you to each one of you for making what KD community what it is, for giving me this fine opportunity to be standing here giving a talk about my project. So a big round of applause for you guys. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, yeah, so back to the topic, revamping the title too. That was the project that I did over the summer for uh, Google Summer of Code, and uh, it was with Kenyan Live. And uh, the project involved uh, revamping. For those who are not aware, what Kenyan Live is, it is one of the most op uh, popular open source, non-linear uh, professional video editors out there. So. Uh, my project uh, mainly involved revamping one of the major features in the tool. Uh, it's called the Titler tool. And what the Titler tool does is it makes title clips. So what title clips are, uh, it's basically like uh, you have these, like at the end of, uh, uh, say, a movie, you have, uh, you know, credits or something like that. You have text, right? So if you want to, like, compose these clips which contain text or images or you want to animate this in some sort and you want to compose it this over your video, you use the Titler tool. So uh, the, the problem is uh, in KDN Live, the Titler tool uses the depreciated uh, Q graphics view since QD5. And this has had many problems, uh, like we had to drop many effects, uh, many popular effects like typewriter effect and uh, the whole code base is of obviously prone to upstream bugs and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a mess. So uh, what I proposed to do was to like, yeah, limited and old uses depreciated queue graphics view. So my solution was to uh, redesign the backend right from like it uses XML right currently. What I proposed to do was to use QML and render it using a new QT class called uh, Q quick render control, uh, which allows you to, you know, carefully select and render, render the uh, control the rendering, uh, you know, processes in a very efficient manner. So yeah, that's that, and uh, I'll just have this. Yeah. So before you have the title tool, uh, uh, MLT. Yeah, that's another term. Uh, MLT is basically the media framework on top of which Canadian Live is built on. So uh, basically, to do anything, you need an MLT module. You need a producer or a consumer, depending on what you're doing. So with the title tool, what you need is a producer. So for QML frames, I needed uh, an entirely new producer. So that was part of the work that I did for the summer. I couldn't complete it, unfortunately. I'm still working on it. And uh, yeah, so I hope to uh, uh, to see the, ti uh, see the tool live in the coming months. And yeah. So about 80% of the work is done, really. And uh, yeah, I hope to uh, continue being part of this great community. Couldn't be asking for anything more. The, great, the experience has been great. The learning curve has been steep. And this community has been great. Thank you. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Aman and uh, I've been a season of KD 2018 GSOC 18, uh, mentor in GCI 18 and 19 GSOC mentor. So uh, since we have a very small time, so I'll just briefly start with uh, GSOC 2018. Uh, well, in SOK I made a uh, I made a block programming language for the project GCompre, and uh, in GSOC, uh, uh, how do I move the slides forward? Okay. okay. Yeah, so uh, so here uh, the GCompre had a GTK plus version and in that uh, there were a lot of piano simulating activities. These were one of the major activities which needed to be ported to the Qt version to move to the version 1.0. So I ported all the four activities which were uh, a piano music composer in which the user will be able to compose a music, uh, a piano music uh, using various, uh, you know, components like he can uh, control the rhythm of his uh, composed music. Like there is 152 BPM, it's beats per minute. So he can control the, you know, playback speed of his music and then there's a uh, play or either uh, clear the entire stuff 
it's also kind of sheet music so it's mainly inspired with uh, the software called MuseCore and uh, itself a great uh, KD application in the Minuet. So there are also many features like it has treble clefs and bass clefs, uh, it also has rests, it also has uh, different kind of notes, let's say quarter note, full note, half notes and so on. So on the right we have some, uh, you know, like uh, predefined lyrics. Uh, these musics are already composed and we have stored it as a form of a JSON object, so these are directly imported. So, th so the lyrics are shown as well as the music are all, uh, also played, so the user can also modify it and then practice on his own. So these are the melodies that we had preloaded. And uh, it was the file manager that I made uh, to handle the creation, so, so like the user cre creates some music and he wants to save it. So he can save, he can load, he can delete, he can edit and he can do anything with this file manager. So I've also integrated with uh, all the other activities uh, which needed, uh, you know, its use. Okay, so uh, so it was another activity named uh, Play Rhythm. So here uh, you can see the metronome uh, over the help uh, button. So uh, so this uh, metronome was uh, oscillated. So it oscillates as uh, you said the BPM, uh, which is 90 BPM here. But you can change it according to the playback speed that you want. And the user had to click the metronome. So this uh, so with this the user can train his accuracy uh, while playing his piano. And uh, now last thing here is. Uh, it is uh, an activity called name that note. So in this, the user gets to learn about all the various, uh, you know, like keyboard keys and all the tones that he'll be playing. So it extends from uh, C3 in the third octave to C6 in the sixth octave. So it has around uh, 18 to 20 levels and uh, there are algorithms that I had implemented to, you know, like uh, make uh, some focused keys that you can see in red and some normal keys that you can see in black and then the user can learn uh, accordingly. So uh, now, uh, so that was my GSOC 2018 project. And uh, so what's ahead of it? Uh, I got uh, my project merged in the master branch and it got released uh, right in the next month or two uh, with the help of my mentors, uh, obviously. And uh, the next, uh, I continued contributions and I, uh, and, uh, I did mentorship in Google Code in 2018 where I mentored uh, 75 participants which, uh, which resulted in uh, completion of around 80 tasks, uh, including coding tasks and uh, community outreach tasks. So the next thing like, uh, and then I did my mentorship in uh, Google Summer of Code uh, this year for the Project Compre for uh, <laughs> the project title One Step Closer to version 1.0. And uh, we along with my uh, three other mentors, uh, we, uh, we led the student and he successfully completed all three evaluations within the perfect time. And uh, you know, like uh, what's ahead uh, for me and KD after uh, all the contributions. So uh, my aim is to still remain active in the community and continue contributing code-wise as well as uh, doing mentorship. And uh, I hope to come here again and give a talk uh, next year also. Thank you. Hi, uh, so this is uh, more or less uh, aligned with our next goal that is KD uh, is a um, app, all for the app basically. So I'm gonna talk about Laplot more on it. So before that, um, I'll start with uh, who am I? So I started contributing in KD in 2014. Uh, my first mentor was Alex Paul. He, he, he guided me throughout. So I picked up uh, Calgium, that is KD EDU project and in that, uh, during that time, we were porting from Qt4 to Qt5, so he guided me throughout the process. And in 2016, I did my GSOC, in which I worked on the lab plot, and in 2019, I uh, mentored in uh, GCI, where I created few tasks related to um, G, uh, KDEDU projects. So, a uh, little about lab plot. Uh, Laplot is KD application where you can, uh, it has a very interactive UI where you can plot scientific data. Um, uh, and it's very easy to manipulate and edit uh, and figure out different uh, analytics from the graph that you plot. So this is the UI of the application. On the left side, you have the project explorer where you can see all the worksheets that you have created. Uh, the center line is the main area where you, uh, you see all the plots. You can mark with different colors, uh, denoting different um, analytics or measurement, whatever you want to show. On the right is the properties of each uh, plot that you select. You'll, uh, you'll be able to see what are the x and y values you are selecting and stuff. And on the status bar, you can just uh, drag and drop all the color changes and everything like that. Uh, so. Uh, Laplot, as I said, it's a scientific data plotter. So uh, you can give inputs. 
either uh, in the form of spreadsheets, such that it has an X column and a uh, uh, column and a row. Uh, you can give uh, in the form of metrics, uh, metrics like data, like X comma Y sort of form. Or you can import uh, some files. For example, if you get uh, data from another uh, third party source or something, you can import the file and directly uh, you know, uh, play around with the data on the plots. Uh, so when you combine multiple spreadsheets or uh, metrics, that forms you a workbook. And when you start plotting your labels and everything, it is called spreadsheet. Uh, so uh, there are different type of curves that you can create using Laplot. Uh, one is x, y, which is normal, like using a spreadsheet, using x values and y values. It can be like uh, an equation, normal equation where you get a straight graph. The second is you can use a mathematical expression, for example, a graph for sine, cos, or any other uh, mathematical expression. And third is for uh, data analytics functions, uh, which is again your third party tool that you want to s somehow manipulate your data and show the graph of that. So uh, during my GSOC, uh, my task was to um, you know, extend the functionality of plotting by using histogram. Histogram is a discrete data plotter. So here, um, uh, we added a lot of different binnings and all. So uh, my mentor was Alexander and uh, Garvit Khatri from India. So, uh, and also I created some few small tasks on GCI, like for example, improving the uh, Laplot uh, websites and add, uh, seeing around and writing documentation on, lap, uh, on Laplots and all. So what was the major things that we do, uh, did? Uh, it, is, it was for uh, extending the plotting capabilities it, uh, and histogram is a continuous data, for example, like it shows from uh, x-axis to y-axis how the data values are changing and uh, the advanced features, are, as I told you. And the external files that I used was a uh, uh, JSL histogram for that. Uh, you, uh, we have the uh, lib uh, complete source code on the GitHub, so you can just fork it and look around if you want to contribute more to it. That's it. Thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name's Alex. Uh, I study at UCL in London, uh, study maths and computer science, and I worked on polishing KIO Fuse. So there's not many slides to this because I wrote this in five minutes on the plane, but you can see if there's more details, especially in the status report uh, for whatever I haven't said in the next three minutes. So a bit about KIO Fuse. So there's a bug report 75324 uh, it's been around for 15 years, and basically the feature request is is that for apps that so for apps that don't use KIO, so aren't KIO enabled, um, when we send URLs, for example, Samba URLs, Fish URLs, etc., to other apps, uh, what we basically do is we use KIO exec, which basically downloads that f URL into a kind of temporary file, and allows you to do edits, but it's kind of really clunky. And so KIO Fuse is a kind of solution around that. And there's been many attempts so in those 15 years, but there's been one this winter developed by Fabian Vogt, and he worked on it that winter, and over the GSOC period, I tried to improve it. So in particular, basically, there's KIO, obviously, that we know, that allows, you know, obviously no more local file I.O., but also kind of network-based I.O. that's kind of transparent, you know, especially if you use Dolphin, it's quite clear. And there's also Fuse, which is kind of like a Linux module that allows creations of file system in user space. Obviously, most of them are in kernel space, and obviously they don't really accept patches for K.I.O. So Fuse basically kind of allows other applications to kind of see transparently what K.I.O. is doing. And so it kind of merges together uh, to allow it to take advantage of it. So I shall go back a bit. Um, so there are some limitations. So KIO doesn't always map well with 
uh, semantics of what Fuse would expect. So it was a bit of hacking around, a lot of hacking around. And then Fuse itself has its own issues. So there's obviously different layers of cache. The way KIO Fuse is implemented is that every file in KIO is, or when you open a file via KIO Fuse, what we do is we download it via KIO as a kind of, in a temporary file, as a kind of cache. So we don't have to send requests all the way up and down f to the uh, actual remote system. And we kind of take advantage of the kernel caching. So, you know, they have write back caching, which is very complex, so I don't want to go into. But we can't use it. So we can then use write through caching. Uh, that's kind of like a small performance issue. It's not really a big issue, in my opinion, because you have network IO, which is a lot more important. And so KIO Fuse kind of has a lot of hacks around currently. Um, and it's currently all in one class. There's about 2,000 something lines, uh, soon 3,000 once everything goes into master. Um, to be honest, I don't know how to go around that cleverly. You can kind of use polymorphism, but that, that just makes the stuff really hard to read. So I think that's kind of a problem for later. In terms of getting it into kind of use and everyday use, um, merge the remaining merge requests. So there's obviously some stuff in KIO Fuse that we need to get in. So for example, there's uh, file jobs. So we have different types of jobs, you know, um, like so transfer jobs, et cetera. But file jobs allow kind of like seeking. So you know, say for example, you want to open or read the first few bytes of a large file. Currently, you'd have to download the whole file and then read the first five bytes. And you can pretty much dosh your system if the file's big enough. Uh, with file jobs for certain slaves, which is SMT, no, sorry, SFTP and SMB and the file IO slave, uh, you can actually do byte-based kind of, you know, seek seek-based kind of reading and writing. Um, the problem was that was that it was kind of very poorly documented. So there was some hack, some stuff that was upstreamed, and it's actually upstream now, so all good. And so what's left is to just get the remain, remaining MRs in, and we're good to go. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Rituka Patwal, and I would like to thank KD Community, Plasma Mobile team, and my mentor, Bhushan Shah, for helping me throughout the project. So my project was Nextcloud integration on Plasma Mobile. Uh, Plasma Mobile. Plasma Mobile is an uh, open source interfa uh, interface for the phones. Basically, the idea is to bring the Linux distro to your mobile phones. and uh, to make a device handy, uh, mobile phone handy, we all know how useful clouds are. So the Nextcloud integration, because Nextcloud is open source and we support open source, and it uh, supports security and privacy. So I'll break down my project in uh, three steps, like what I did. Mainly the work is done for the contact synchronization. Uh, first is the uh, Nextcloud login plugin. These are some screenshots. Uh, what happens is for uh, uh, plas uh, setting in settings apps, you can add the Plasma uh, Nextcloud account, and uh, mm, huh. you can add the Nextcloud account. And uh, I used uh, Webflow for login because uh, uh, in Webflow the password is not saved, a uh, random password is generated for the system. In that, uh, in that way, uh, the user's uh, password is secured and uh, real password is not uh, saved in the app application. Next is K-Accounts Contact Sync plugin. Uh, what K-Accounts is? K-Accounts is a system uh, to add the accounts uh, and to manage accounts, basically. To manage accounts on the Plasma Mobile and uh, sync uh, sync is a uh, data access layer that manages synchronization, caching, and indexing. So I use sync plugin to uh, synchronize the uh, contacts, to save the contacts of the accounts to manage by key accounts uh, in sync data source. 
Then is the uh, next plugin, K People Sync. Uh, so K People provides the access to contacts, phone uh, pro, uh, provides the access to contacts, phone book, etc. And uh, uh, Tasma phone book app uses a uh, uh, K, uh, K people as uh, to access the contacts. So what I did was to transfer the contacts from the uh, sync data store, the, this contacts that were synchronized by sync plugin to the uh, K people data source. That's it. Uh, there's a demo video if the time permits. Uh. So uh, right now the work has been done for the uh, accounts, uh, sorry, contacts. You can add your next cloud account. Uh, now the contacts are synchronizing for the account added. And in the Plasma phone book act, those uh, contacts are visible. Now I'm adding the new account on my uh, cloud server. The sync uh, will uh, happen automatically after five minutes, but for the demo, I synchronized it uh, manually, and that was visible on the, uh, the changes were visible on the uh, phone book app. So the sim uh, for further work, uh, similar work I will do for the calendars, and then for the files and photograph system. Um, thank you. Uh, you can read more about all the pro uh, uh, plugins at uh, orepala.home.blog and my uh, GSOC status report, you can contact. Thank you. OK, so my project was to port KD Connect to Windows. So for those who do not know what is KD Connect, um, KD Connect is uh, an application for uh, end users to sync their mobile phone, like the, like the usual tasks that they do on the mobile phone through their laptop and vice versa. Like you can sync the notifications from your desktop to your phone. And you can also sync the clipboard. And there are a lot more plugins, like inhibiting screensaver and a lot more things. So the main issues that KD Connect had, like initially it was being built just fine on Windows. At least it was building and connecting. But it still had to do some work on notifications, uh, the SFTP plugin, and many other plugins. Because uh, mostly they were still focused on Linux, and they weren't uh, like they didn't have their Windows counterparts. So main part of my project was to develop the plugins and ultimately uh, publishing the port to the Windows Store. So most of the improvements that I did for KD Connect for Windows. So the first one was the notifications plugin. So for notifications, I developed a Snowtoast backend for Windows so that we can use the existing K notification API calls so that we can, uh, so that we can, um, so that we can use the existing code that we use in our end applications, and still get the notifications on Windows like we do on Linux. So um, I have uploaded a video for that on YouTube, um, so we can check that later. And the next was SFTP plugin. So for SFTP plugin, a technical limitation was that um, we do not actually have uh, any implementation of SSHFS on Windows right now. So instead, I developed the KIO Extras um, SFTP plugin so that it works on Windows as well. So some of that work has been integrated, but uh, currently the limitation is that I can make a I can make a connection through KIO Extras, but still I cannot actually like 
browse all the um, all the file system because uh, many parts in the KIO extras is still Linux specific, like the permissions and stuff. And we hope to uh, make that more cross-platform at the KF6 release. Um, most of the other plugins were ported as well, like the screensaver plugin and um, and a lot more plugins. So uh, I have a playlist for all the plugins uploaded on YouTube as well. So you can check that out as well. Um, so the final deliverables for my project were two installation modes. So like Windows has two types of um, installations available. One of them is the .exe setup. That is a desktop application, like the, mm, like the conventional ones that we have been seeing on Windows. And the new one is the Windows Store app. That is a .abpx package. So for that, um, we don't have as much freedom like we do on for the desktop applications. So we are still working on getting the more developed desktop application features on the Windows Store application as well. But the basic functionality of the, uh, of the project still works on both of these. So if you want to try out the final, the final deliverables that I have made, I have some blog posts on my blog as well. The link will be at the end. And otherwise, uh, the both, uh, both of the installation modes are available on CI, thanks to Ben. Um, so the current status of the project is that most features have been ported, but there's, some, there's still more documentation required for the project. Um, it still needs most test testing because sometimes the K notifications backend causes the current um, port to crash. So we still need to look into that. Um, some minor challenges like the one I told, like the Windows Store build doesn't have the system integrations yet. So that is one thing to work on. But we are hoping that the deadline for the next release date uh, will be the one for our release as well. Because we cannot actually release a project before, like we cannot release a project that uses the master branch. Like most of my work has been on the master branch of frameworks. And I cannot actually make a, an official release on Windows Store before the next release of KD frameworks that actually I'm using. So that was all. So my blog and contact details are on journal.use.tech. Um, most of my blogs are first posted on the KD specific blog because somehow my RSS feed doesn't work for the original blog. Um, the GSOC final status report is available on this link. And my project details for the GSOC are on this link. Thank you.